In today's show, we're recapping Wednesday. There are 13 games on, so we're going to talk about them all. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Also, TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball. If you're on TikTok, go and follow me. Don't, don't have many followers over there, but do it. At RedRock underscore B-Ball. Why not? All right, we've got games on. Also, did I tell you to thank, did I thank you? Did I? I'll do it now. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. we 13 games on. I'm not going to do waiver wire stuff. We did that earlier today. Let's just bang straight in, Warnie. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of news things. Jacques Vaughn hired as the full-time coach of the Brooklyn Nets, Imo Yudoka. They uh, may have been subtly behind the scenes threatened not to hire Imo Yudoka. They got Jacques Vaughn. The Nets have responded brilliantly to Vaughn who was dreadful as a coach in Orlando, but has done well with the Nets. I think he coached them in the bubble, and he's coached them again now, and they've, he's done really well. We'll see how it goes as the season progresses. Bradley Beal is out again tomorrow for COVID. We also heard that the Hornets trio, doubtful Caleb Martin, Gordon Haywood, and LaMelo Ball will all be out again tomorrow, and it gave us the impression that they wouldn't be playing this week, which the Charlotte Hornets injury reporting has been dreadful all season. We don't really have any idea What's going on with these guys or why it's taking so long or any sort of time frame? It's frustrating, but that is where we are with that at the moment. I'm not going to waste too much time. Like We've got games to talk about. Let's do it. First game. Early one. The Hurricane game. The Mavericks, they go down to the Orlando Magic. That's uh, disappointing. D- really disappointing, especially an Orlando Magic team without, 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 without Paolo Banquero. 94-87, the final score. I think they didn't play four quarters in this one. So did they play four quarters? Because that doesn't seem like a big enough score. Anyway, I'm flustering myself. Spencer Dinwiddie, 38 minutes. 29-4-5, two steals, a block, four triples. A huge game. He was bad last game, but a really good bounce back. Well, Luka Doncic did cop a little bit of a hit, hit his elbow. Only played 35 minutes, which compared to the 38 that Dinwiddie played isn't enough. And he broke his 30-point scoring streak. 24-6-6, six six, three steals, two blocks. Uh, just a poor night from Luka. 31% shooting. 57 from the line. He was not himself. He still had 44% usage, but just obviously not quite at his best. I think that elbow issue um, definitely had uh, had an impact on him. Dorian Finney-Smith played well last game. We thought, okay, will he do it again? No. Six shots in 31 minutes, eight points. He did have a steal and a block, but one rebound, one assist. It's really hard to suggest that he's a 12-team league guy, but the Mavericks play tomorrow. So that's the only reason you would have him is for streaming for Thursday. With old mate Christian Wood out, Dwight Powell started, played 19 minutes and had two points with three steals. He loves getting steals, Dwight. And it was Muxy Kleber who got the bulk of those minutes. 33 minutes for Kleber, eight points, two threes. He, he, both Kleber and Powell are 12-team streams for tomorrow, but that's about it. While McGee played 11 minutes. And old mate Josh Green had like 15 minutes at halftime, ended with just 25 minutes, had two steals, but a bit disappointing. 6-0-3 for Green. He played more than Tim Hardaway. He still remains a watch guy. He's a stream guy for tomorrow, um, and he's a 14-team league guy at uh, for 14-team league guy at the moment um, moving forward, and we'll see where that goes. Reggie Bullock continues to be, honestly, just dreadful. What's going on with this guy? He started out this season, or last season, the same way as this season. Zero points with three rebounds. For the Magic, no Bunkero. So we got Chuma OKK starting. 32 minutes for Chuma. Eight and seven with a block. He can have games where he's a 12-team league player. This isn't one of them. And he shouldn't be on a 12-team roster. Wendell Carter should, obviously. 13 and 12 for him, while Franz Wagner had 22, three and six. After a really slow start, Franz is a top 40 player over the last week. Really, really good stuff. Jalen Suggs, only 26 minutes. That's The minutes are a bit disappointing. But 12, 7, and 4, a steal and a block. Hit both his free throws. Just 33 shooting is rough. He is a 12-team league must-roster guy, in my opinion. While another game of bowl 
The numbers are good. 11 and 7, two threes, a block. But 25 minutes with no foul trouble. Monday's game, 21 minutes with no foul trouble. And this is without Paolo, Cole Anthony, Mark Fultz, Gary Harris, and he who should not, should not be named. Four guys, five guys who probably will be rotation guys at some point this season. I maintain skepticism of Bowl maintaining 25 minutes plus or of Bowl even maintaining top 120 value. I think he can, but I am absolutely skeptical of him doing it because we're seeing things start to fade off a little bit at the moment. Still hold him, of course. Mo Bamba played 24 minutes, 12 and 6. I'm not overreacting to that. That is because of all those injuries and then Bunkero on top of that. He will pop off for the occasional big game, but I'm not sacrificing a roster spot to try it out. Well, Terrence Ross had six points in 30 minutes, which is, you know, whatever the opposite of cool is. That is what that is. Next game. Blazers beat the Hornets 105-95. What, the Hornets have lost about three or four in a row. Not uh, not going particularly well for them at the moment. And as I just said, the injury stuff is, is still an issue. For the Blazers, they had injury stuff. Jeremy Grant was out. Yusuf Nurkic was out. Keon Johnson was out. They started Drew Eubanks at center. He only played 22 minutes, didn't close, which is frustrating. But we saw last season when he plays and gets minutes, he puts up numbers. 14 and 8, three blocks. That's awesome. There's no real point in having him outside of games that Nurkic is out. We don't expect Nurkic's injuries to be anything serious. It is a, a, a duck to soreness. I don't think it's going to be serious. I wouldn't be rushing to add Eubanks, nor would I rush to add Trendon Watford who had 8, 2, and 6 in 26 minutes. He also benefited from both Grant and Nurkic being out. So did Shaden Sharp, who is just really highlights highlights everywhere for him. Fantasy game, mm, not so good. 17 and 4, no assists, no steals, no blocks. He played 29 minutes, but was on 70% shooting. He is the 239th ranked player this season. He's got a rotation role, sure but I'm not adding him in 12-team leagues or even 14-team leagues. Well, Anthony Simon struggled with efficiency, 19 points on 18 shots. He had six assists and two steals, so a pretty good game. Not the best, while Lillard had 26, 6, and 7. Another poor Josh Hart shooting night, 22 from the field and 33 from the line. He had 11 rebounds, he had a steal. He still is absolutely a hold. He still is a hold. Uh, that's, that's all we got from that. And just as Winslow started, he had six points in 26 minutes. He's only a stream-type guy. For the Hornets, Dennis Smith, you just keep rolling along. It is going to die. It's going to, I don't know when, but it is going to die. Well, I do know when. It's when those players return. 13-2-4 with four steals for Smitty. While Mason Plumley, the cockroach, had 16-12-4 in 32 minutes. This is a great game from Plum. Remember last game, though? Big Dick Nick Richards played more minutes than Plumley. Plumley has been solid enough. 155th ranked player. Punt free throws, he jumps up. And you can use him in 12-team leagues. He's probably more a 14-team league guy and a 12-team points player. But there is some value. My issue with Plumlee is not like, oh, he's a dreadful fantasy contributor. He's an okay fantasy contributor. It's the fact that this team, and even the Pistons in, a couple of years ago, thought that he was the answer as the starting center or thought we're never going to upgrade from him. Why is he here doing this? Why is he in this role? That, that makes no sense from a real-life basketball perspective. Kelly Oubre, man, is there someone who loves shitting on your percentages more than this bloke? 16 and 8, which looks great, but... 26% shooting. He went 71 from the line on seven attempts. And this is why he's not even a top 175 player this season, despite starting getting 30 minutes a night with everyone out. He will not remain. He's barely even a 12-team league guy now. He will not remain, I don't think, a 12-team league player. While PJ Washington Jr. had 10, 7, and 4 in 33 minutes. He remains a 12-team league guy. He remains frustrating with his lack of efficiency, but he does remain a 12-team league player. As for Big Dick Nick, six points in 15 minutes. That's why we didn't chase that 25 minutes last game. We had no reason to believe that he would be a 12-team league guy. And Big Dick Nick. Get that garbage out of here! Sorry, big fella. Um, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. Are you someone that hires for your company? Well, if you are, you, like me, know the importance of getting the right staff in for your business. Because if you don't, it costs you time, it costs you money. It costs you productivity, it costs you sales, it costs you everything. It's such a big cost in a business. So doing it right the first time is important. And that's where LinkedIn Jobs comes in. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Go create that job on LinkedIn Jobs. It's free, do it, it's easy. And then go to your profile and add the purple hashtag hiring frame and that will let your network know that you are hiring. The simple tools like the screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. 
It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs. Number one, in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Go check out Locked On Sports today after you finish listening to Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Make it your second listen. All the sports news across the sports world wrapped up on Locked On Sports today. Third game. It was the Nuggets getting over the line barely against the Pacers. 122-119, the final score here. Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic. Um, foul trouble is why he played 21 minutes. He still had 24, 4, and 6, 2 steals and a block, but he had 5 fouls in 21 minutes. That's why the minutes are down low. And of course, we talked about Aaron Gordon on the waiver wire show today. I said, yeah, I think he's a must roster player, especially for points. He'll have a big one, then he'll have a stink up. Well, he's a big one. 18, 16, and 6 with a triple one. Nine free throw attempts. Aaron Gordon actually in Category League's top 50 over the last week. He is a 12-team league guy, amazingly, but a back-end player. KCP remains 12-team valuable, 15, 8, and 2 with two steals. And what is very interesting is we got 30 minutes from the big stiffy Bones Highland. 16, 2, and 3. Now, he shot horribly 31%. That's three really strong games in a row from him. This one, we had Bruce Brown only play 22 minutes, some curious rotation decisions, and Jokic playing fewer minutes, and they went small a lot. They didn't play DeAndre Jordan those extra minutes, thank God. But it was Bones that got the playing time. That's definitely a 14-team league ad, and I'd consider it in 12. I'm not 100% sold on him in 12, but that is obviously really good. The headmaster, Jamal Murray, had 18-8 and eight with three steals. He's clearly back, and the buy-low is done. He hit all five of his free throws as well. Well, Maga Porter Jr. didn't hit the 50% of threes in this one. 17 and 6 with three threes. But he played 36 minutes. And I believe that is the most minutes he has played in a game this season, which obviously um, is hyper-encouraging. It's it's massively encouraging to get that. And we, ho- we hope that we can get big minutes from him as we move forward. As for the Shark, Bruce Brown, yeah, not good. Baby shark, he had a steal on a block, but only 22 minutes. If you're only getting 22 minutes, you drop him in 12, 10 leagues. Like I'm no, his upside's not high enough to hold through shenanigans. For the Pacers, Halliburton continues to be amazing. 21-11 with three steals and three threes. Great. Miles Turner, 26 minutes. Foul trouble for him as well, but 14-11, one steal, three blocks. He's a 17th ranked player this season per game. Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, will he lose value if he gets traded? Not, not guaranteed. No. But I love here that we got a big game from Isaiah Jackson. 17 and 10 in just 18 minutes. Now, this is not the norm. He had six free throw attempts and hit five of them. He had seven field goal attempts and hit six of them. Like this sort of permanent production is not realistic, but this is why he remains the best center stash. It's not a Kongwu. It's not Duran. It's not Kessler. It's not Richards. It's not someone else I'm forgetting, surely. It's him. Because he occasionally can have the big game in limited minutes. And then if Turner is dealt, it's going to be huge. I think, I hope, I believe. Benedict Matherin, Humpty Dumpty, only 25 minutes, which considering he was going crazy is a bit weird. But he had 30 points with six triples. His problem, I'll stress it again for fantasy, is he doesn't do much else. Two points, zero assists, one steal. He got to the line, but didn't really hit him. Four of six, but the 59% shooting is great. All of this is said, this is a huge game. That brings him to 99th on the season. He is, of course, a 12-team league guy, but he's a little bit empty. They started Andrew Nembhard, even though Aaron Neesmith was back. Because Neesmith's bad. I don't think Nembhard's good, but Neesmith's bad. Nembhard, 29 minutes, 8, 4, and 5, 2 steals. I, I would add him in 14-team leagues, and I think he's at least at least a 12-team consideration player. Had Bud Heald on the Buy Low show, or sorry, the Sell High show. Well, it's, the, it's both, isn't it? Buy Low and Sell High, same show. But he was on it the other day as a Sell High, saying there's a few things I'm not sure are sustainable, and he has 17, 1, and 0 with two threes. Low shooting numbers, didn't get to the line, fell right off here. That's fine. We expected that to happen. Speaking oh, speaking of something, I don't know. Dreadfulness? Stand by your man! Six and five in 18 minutes for Jalen Smith. 22% shooting. This guy, if he misses shots early, he just loses all confidence. He's got no confidence at all. He can be a useful fantasy player. Literally last game. He had 15 and 11 with three threes and a block. And that is really what we drafted him to play. 28 minutes, made 12 and 8, get him a block, hit two threes. But he has too many of these games. 
Is he worth a hold? I still think so because I'm stubborn. Because I look at O'Shea Brissett and go, Ooh, you are actually not very good at all. And I look at the other power forwards who are the Red Rooster, Terry Taylor, who doesn't play, James Johnson, who doesn't play. And I just hope that Smith can gain some confidence. But I, I get it if you want to drop him. It's not. It's, I get it. He's bad. He's a bad player. And I have never stated that he's not a bad player. But I did think he would be a better fantasy player than he's been. And that's on me because he's been dreadful. Should we go to the next game? Yeah, we probably should, shouldn't we? It is the Detroit Pistons getting smashed by the Celtics. 128-112. We'll start with the good. Yeah, let's start with the good. 19, 10, and 6 in 31 minutes for Ivy. One steal, 50% shooting. Really good. That brings him to 100th on the season. He's going to have some shaky nights. The rebounds are especially surprising. How is he getting so many rebounds? Um, but he was very, very impressive here. 30 minutes for Jalen Duran. Now, he played a lot of garbage time, and he got extra minutes because Stewart was in foul trouble. But, you know, if you are a fair income coach or a fair income general manager, which the Pistons have neither of, you should just start this guy. I shudder to think what is going to happen when Marvin Bagley returns. 10 and 10 is good for Duran. Stealing a block is good. He is going to be a good fantasy player. I don't think we need to have him in 12-team leagues because I don't think he's going to be able to play this role, which is frustrating. I could be wrong, though, because we saw big minutes begin. Foul trouble and blowouts. Alf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Um, Just 20 minutes for Alf. 12 and 10, nothing else. He still isn't a top 100 player this season. I think Bagley will impact him. You still hold him, but mm, for how long, I don't know. The most obvious sell high in the world, Boyan Bogdanovich has fallen way off. He is now, what, 87th? Yeah. 17, 2, and 1. He's still not, like, he's not shooting horribly. 71% from 2, but 25% from 3, and the value's gone. While Sadiq, we still hold him, though. Sadiq Bay, 18 and 4, but he shot pretty poorly outside of the 9 of 10 from the line. And let's talk about Kate Cunningham, because he, he was bad, like, really bad. My name is Richie Cunningham. People think this means that he's a bad player. No. It means he's a bust. No. It means he's a bust as a number one pick. No. None of that stuff is true. Literally last week, he was putting up huge numbers. And despite this stinking performance, he's the 76th ranked player this season. That's not particularly good, obviously. But, you know, this is a four-point game on 9% shooting. Unless you look at this and go, oh, here we go. Got the new norm. Here's what Cade's going to do. And the smart people out there know that that's not the case. Will he get to the 24 to 30 range that I thought he would be in? Probably not. Like, I'll admit it, he probably won't get there. I thought that we'd get big steps forward in efficiency, but we just aren't. And that might happen, but he hasn't taken the steps forward that I thought that he would. Right? Clearly, on, that's on me. No problem at all. But I also know he's not this bad. And I know that this is a huge buy low because he is, for some reason, the fantasy zeitgeist, the NBA zeitgeist, doesn't like him. I don't know what it is, but they do not like him. One bad game from Cade, and people are all on him. They're all, they're all over him. And I don't really know why it is. It's like Paul George, though. Right? They're not the same player, but Paul George, people hate him. And I don't particularly like Paul George. But I do understand that, that people out there have this weird opinion of him, and they'll twist anything to further a narrative that, that, that the guy sucks. And Cade is struggling at times. He's had a struggle, a massive hot streak, and then another struggle here over the last week. It'll balance out somewhere in the middle. But this was bad. Undoubtedly bad. Really, really undoubtedly. Um, okay. The Celtics, 31 points for Tatum in 32 minutes. Five assists. Look, he just keeps on doing what he does, which is great. Jalen Brown. JB, you've done it again. 30 and seven with two threes. Good percentage night from him. Al Horford, 13 and 6. Good night from him. Obviously, must roster. Marcus Smart only played the 23 minutes. They didn't really need much more. Two points only, but 11 assists and two steals. A couple of things we need to address here. Sam Hauser played 32 minutes. What? 24 points, six triples. He's a good shooter. He does nothing else, literally nothing else. Don't fall for that in 12 or 14, maybe six, maybe 16 team leagues. That's about it. Derek White, only 20 minutes. Maximum Derek. That's two straight for White of under 20. The only reason I would suggest maybe you hold him is that Brogdon left with a hamstring problem. 
and maybe that means more minutes. It didn't in this one, but maybe it does. So if you do have him, you might consider it, but I don't know if there's much upside. As for Brogdon, injury-prone guy, struggling with minutes, hurt again. Get that garbage out of here! That's four things. Yeah, get, yeah, no, no point. What am I holding on to a hamstring-injured 124th-ranked player for? Why? The other one is Grant Williams. Started again, 20 minutes, five points. The reason that he was a top 100 player for a little stretch there was he was shooting about 70% from the field, hadn't missed a free throw, and it was never going to continue. And guess what? It hasn't continued, and he just doesn't do anything. He needs absolute outlier shooting percentages to even get to the top 100, and he's now 115th for the season. I I am not... I, I don't think that he's a must roster player. I think he's fine if you want to hold him, but I do not think that he is. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. I just, that's it. I don't think that he is a uh, a must roster player. There, I said it. The next game. Um. Yeah. Okay. The Knicks. They lose to the Nets, eighty-five to one hundred and twelve. That is an ass-kicking. Tom Thibodeau is a bad coach, and he should have been fired two years ago. He should never have been hired. What What is this guy doing? What are we starting Cam Reddish and Jericho Sims? Why is Isaiah Hartenstein playing 15 minutes? Well, Josh, you're only saying that because he's on your fantasy roster. Or or he's a good player. Like One, one of those two. One of those two, probably. Um... Sims probably wasn't the biggest issue in this game. Seven and six with three blocks. But he's, he's got absolutely no business playing big minutes. Like, there's no need for it. They got crunched. This roster makes doesn't make complete sense together. The coaching's dreadful. They'll have some good wins, but none, none of it makes sense. Let's talk about the performances. Randall had 24 and 11. That's, that's good from him. Team worst minus 29. Mm, that's not so good. Jalen Brunson, 14-4-2. He's been pretty good this season, I would say. Probably exceeding expectations to a degree. Rowan Barrett, you're going to be shocked. Absolutely hold on. Whoever's next to you, hold on to him. Grab him. Because Rowan Barrett shot poorly from the field. And, oh, I hate to break it to you. He shot poorly from the free throw line. And, oh, he had three assists and one steal. And, he's not a top 100 player. Whoa. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to hear. You've never heard it before about RJ Barrett. He's shit ass. He is extraordinarily overpaid and overrated. And I still think you probably do want to hold him in a 12 team league, to be honest, just because of the scoring. But man, he, he just hurts. As for Hartenstein, your immediate reaction will be to drop him. I get that. I don't understand what Tibbs is doing. This is, he's a top 100 player, Hartenstein, despite starting two games all season. Um, but this uh, two points five rebounds is honestly a bad fantasy. Line. I, I can see that. All right, that's not a reflection on Hartenstein to me. That's a reflection on Thibodeau, and Hartenstein should play more minutes. But we're dealing with Captain Comb over here. I have no idea if he's going to play those minutes. I would personally hold Hartenstein, and I, I will do it. And if you ask me that question, I will say to hold him. But I, I get it. I, I get. I get the the upside lacking. And in a points league. He's probably 30 to 40 spots less valuable in a points league than he is in a category league. So your decision to drop in that sort of format is a lot easier. I, I fail to look at this team and go, you know what? Tom's right. Jericho Sims is better and going to get the minutes. I look at this and go, at some point, surely. Surely. Surely you're realizing this isn't the answer here, are you? Surely you realize that, Thomas. But I don't know if he does. As for Reddish, what are we doing? Zero points in 18 minutes. Quentin Grimes was healthy. Played four minutes of garbage time. He went for starting to like, quickly had quickly is also not playing well, but two points in 20 minutes. Like, I don't know. Obi, Obi Toppin, five points in 21 minutes. He's, I, I'd like to see him get more minutes at some point. He's not good. He's not going to be good. I don't think he's going to be better than what we've seen and he should get more minutes than what we've seen, but I don't think he's going to be good. This team is just badly weird, weirdly bad, or just maybe they're just bad or maybe they're just weird. Brooklyn. Durant, again, brilliant. 29, 12, and 12, one steal, two blocks. He's been great, obviously. But what I am most encouraged about is Seth Curry played 23 minutes. He hit six triples for 23 points. First time he's had a really big game this season. I'm still not adding him as a 12-teamer, but 14 teams, yes. With Ben Simmons playing 24 minutes, he was okay. 
Six, nine, and four, two steals and a block. And that gets it done, sort of. They started Edmund Sumner again. Surely that's got to end, but maybe not. 18, five, and three. 18 points, Edmund Sumner. What? Don't don't react too much to that, like I just did. Well, Royce O'Neal, I think he had six points in the first four minutes. He ended with six points. He played 34 minutes. He had 10 rebounds, five assists, and two steals. But this is one of those low usage games. He was an astonishing plus 44, and he remains a 12-team league guy, defying all expectations. Cam Thomas, six points, two rebounds, two assists. 22 minutes with Seth's, Seth's minutes going up, Ben's minutes going up. Thomas will be relegated down. I feel like you can drop him. If he isn't getting to the line an outsized amount of times, there's not much there. He got there zero times today. I get if you want to hold him. People love a bucket. They love a guy who scores. They love a guy who does one-on-ones. I, I, I just don't see him as a 12-team league guy. While Claxton had 12-6 and six in 20 minutes, not his best night. He had some foul trouble. But still, 12-6 and six in under 20 minutes with a block is all right as you go out there and spank the uh, the New York Knickerbockers. Jumper Joe Harris had 10 points in his 32 minutes. The next game, they do it again, the big fellas. The Jazz win. They beat the Hawks. They come back to get the win in this one. Which, honestly, some of the, like, the, are, what is this team doing? How, how are they doing this? Um, it's been astonishing to watch them perform the way they have. Larry Markkinen, again, 32-8, and eight, six dribbles. 20th ranked player this season. Sure. Malik Beasley went off. 18 points, six threes in 29 minutes, two steals. He moved to the bench. Don't overreact. Don't go and add him in 12s. Jordan Clarkson, the man on the street. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. Now, he shot poorly, but 23, 4, and 5 is nice. There were some bad lines here, though. Vanderbilt Bar, 6 and 7 in 28 minutes. Don't but don't care too much. Just hold. Kelly Linick, only 21 minutes. 14 and 6. He was just getting outplayed by other guys. Still, still want to hold him. He's still the 72nd ranked player. Don't drop him. Colin Sexton played 13 minutes. Now, that... That is troubling. Three points, 17% shooting. In true Colin Sexton style, he had 0 3, 0 rebounds, 0 assists. But he'd been playing like 27 28. So that, it's probably just an outlier, but we obviously want to pay attention to this. Walker Kessler, 16 minutes only, but 12 and 6 with three blocks. Perfect shooting. I love the three blocks. To me, he's just a block stream, and I wouldn't add him in 10s, and I wouldn't add him in 12s. But that's, I think, seven blocks over his last three games without cracking 20 minutes in any of those games. That's elite blocking. And that has value if you need a block. Sometimes like you can find one block, but finding two or three, even in limited minutes, it's very hard to do. And he does it. But that's going to be really team dependent. In points leagues, you don't need to worry about him, I don't think. For the Hawks, Trey Young returned and he's still not shooting well, is he? 22-4-9, 36% shooting. Didn't get to the free throw line at all. He's a massive buy low at the moment, I think, Trey. DeJounte Murray, 26, 6, and 5, 38 minutes, shot well. Good game again from him. Well, DeAndre Hunter, 22 points is really good. Three rebounds, zero assists, one steal is not. And he does not remain a 12 10. He's rostered everywhere, like basically everywhere, and he's not a top 150 player at all. He shouldn't be. Shouldn't be rostered. Um, remember when the Baptist started out the season playing 36 minutes a night, um, going crazy, and yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, no, we're, no. 28 minutes, 15, 4, and 3. One of his actual better games, but a usage of 12%. It's really troubling. I'm not really sure where he goes from here. We can't really do anything about it, sell or trade or nothing like that. It's a little bit troubling. Clint Capella, though, 26 minutes, 15 and 19 with two blocks. The big fella is dominating. And again, if you had hopes that a Kongwu was just going to replace him this season, I think you can I think you can delete those thoughts. I, I don't think it's happening. And that makes a Kongwu... Not a 12-team league hold. Now, they play tomorrow. So if you do have a Kongwu, you want to hold and get that game tomorrow. Otherwise, there's no point having him in a 12-team league. I don't believe. And AJ Griffin, who dropped in, what, 24 points last game? We thought, all right, let's see what happens. How does he play with you know, the holidays and does he jump over them? Well, he had three points in 10 minutes. So if you did add him after yesterday's game in a 12-team league, you can drop him. If you added him in 14s, you probably want to drop him as well. It does appear that he just really isn't in Nate McMillan's plan. But, you know... Nate McMillan's plan leads to them blowing a lead against the Jazz at home. So who knows which one of those is correct. Should we do the next game? We probably should, yeah? It is the Rockets and the Raptors up in Toronto. 116 Toronto, 109 Houston. Let's start with the big man in the middle, the delicate dancer, Alperen Sengun. 
It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. 17 and 8, one steal, three blocks. Do you know he's the 36th ranked player this season? I said, oh, I think he's getting outpriced at number 50. Then Bruno Fernando started over him. I went, oh, geez, I didn't, you know, oh, okay, good. I said he was getting outpriced. And now I look stupid. <laughs> what? What is going on with this guy? And he's still only playing 30 minutes a night. This is a legitimate, legitimate, not saying he's a top 20 NBA player because he's nowhere near it, all right? But legitimate top 20 upside in like a 35-minute role. He's cranking. Jalen Green, 21, 6, and 6. The buy low smashed close there, 54th over the last week. Kevin Porter Jr., rough on the shooting, but 11 assists, 12 points. Eric Gordon, 10 points. But the most maligned NBA player at the moment is probably Jabari Smith. Ah, Smitty. It's probably not true. We're going to malign a lot of Timberwolves later on, don't worry. But Smith still only hit 36% of his shots. But you know what's to start? Playing 31 minutes and getting 15 and 10. Hit two threes. Hold him, I believe. Hold him. Um, Tari preseason, 21 minutes, 14, 6, and 5 with 5 steals. That is erection-inducing. The 5 steals, the 5 assists. Jay Sean Tate apparently is going to be out a while, and that's really good for preseason's numbers. So, you know, where what do we do with him? It is a little bit luxury stashy because there is Gordon and Martin and Smith and then Tate, I guess, when he returns. Eason's just good. Like, I think he's going to be good. And it's just frustrating that Silas won't give him those minutes. He is a luxury stash. KJ Martin is not, to me, a must-roster 12-er. But 13-6 and six with two blocks is all right. Like, just, he gets it done on these stupid shooting nights, like 83%, which we know is not real. For the Raptors, Van Vliet, again, dominating. 32, 3-4, three 7 threes, 4 steals, and a block. Wow, he's killing it. Ananobi, 27-10 and 10 with 3 steals and a block and 4 triples. Ah. Oh, OG. But what about Scarf? OG. Blizzard stop, ones. OG. Uh, you better stop, OG. Um, oh, they're crazy. Uh, he's been ridiculous. Is he a sell high a little bit, but no one is giving you top 25 numbers. It will value back. Roll with it. Scotland Barnes, 13, 8, and 5. Not a bad night. Not a great night. Just good. 14 and 6 for Otto Porter. Well, Gary Trent had four steals. That is really good. He only took eight shots, though, and played under 30 minutes with 11 points. His value continues to go up and down every game. He's, again, a back-end player. Boucher played 13 minutes, 2-4, and four, a steal and a block. He is not very good. He's not a very good fantasy player. He gets consistently overrated, in my opinion. But the big sneeze hurt his ankle. So that's Achua, who doesn't look like he'll play in the short term, and Siakam, who we already know is out. Does that mean that Boucher gets minutes? I don't know, because Young and Porter are the ones who got the minutes. And this is, again, the problem. When you've got so many players coming off the bench who can play the same role... Your upside's absolutely limited. And that's why chasing Christian Coloco after he played 31 minutes against the Bulls was a fool's errand. Five points for Coloco, 25% shooting, one block. He's still rostered in tons of leagues, as is Boucher, as is Achua. And they shouldn't be. They should not be anywhere near. Boucher may be accepted, but they shouldn't be near 12 team leagues. Not, look, not even close, I don't think. Boucher, you had a crack. You said, let's see what happens. With Siakam out, let's see if they give him the minutes. But this is the uncertainty surrounding the Raptors, surrounding Nick Nurse, surrounding um, Chris Boucher throughout his basically entire career. And it makes it really hard to hold on to him. The next game, we take a look at the Suns against the Timberwolves. The, the Wolves did fought, fight back a bit. 129-117, they lose. Mikhail Bridges went crazy. 42 minutes. 31-9-5, and five, four steals and a block. I love seeing that aggression. 20 shot attempts as well. That's awesome from Bridges. Really, really strong. He'd struggled a little bit, but that's great. Booker, 32 4 and 10 assists. We saw him be a first round player when Chris Paul was out last season. And Cameron Payne, yeah, this is why you added him 23 6 and 8 with four threes. You just keep holding him until Chris Paul returns. Tory Craig, he's, you don't want anything to do with him in 12 team league. Six points with two threes in 26 minutes. Well, DeAndre Ayton, he is a buy low, but he's also putrid. Like, he's. Does he hate this team? Yeah, probably. Does he hate himself? I don't know. But do more with what you got. Nine and six in 33 minutes. No blocks. He's not blocking any shots. He never gets to the line. He's a waste. Imagine not drafting Luka Doncic because you didn't want him to play with Devin Booker. For this bloke, <sighs> still got to hold him. 
and he is a bit of a buy low, but man, this is it's atrocious. He's really bad at the moment. Not much else really happening there. Oh, Landry Shamit had 16 points, but of course we know Landry Shamit. He had zero rebounds, one assist, and shot 71%, which of course is highly unsustainable. So you do nothing with it. You don't add him anywhere outside of 20 team leagues. But the Wolves, Gobert at least had a good game. 25-11 with three blocks, 73%. We talked about him on the buy low show saying, hey, the field goals have got to come up. The blocks have got to come up. And here we are. They did. Jaden McDaniels, after a string of piss poor games, 38 minutes, 24-8 and eight with a block. Now, 71% shooting is not realistic. 38 minutes, considering he fouls out almost every other game. Is not realistic, but this was strong. D'Angelo Russell, apart from the fact that he let the team play four and five for one possession because he didn't know he needed to be on the court, had a real bounce back. 20 and six, four triples, hit all his free throws. Great. Uh, Towns was bad. 11 and eight, four assists. The form with him next to Gobert, it's just not there. Big games without Gobert, bad games with Gobert or less good games with Gobert. And this is why I liked him as an early second round guy, not a first round player, not a top 10 player. I want to talk about massive disappointments. Eleven, three, and six for Anthony Edwards. Two steals, thirty-three percent shooting. He is he the next in line of the players who just all of a sudden inexplicably can't hit free throws because he can't hit free throws. I railed on about why are we taking him at pick 15, 17? Why is he going in the top twenty? I had him mid third round or early third round around that. 30 to 34 range. But even that looks stupid now. Like he's nowhere near where he needs to be. He's really struggling. It is a big buy low, but he's acting like he hates his teammates. And maybe he does. There is something completely off here. Like it is, it's something needs to change. It's really bad. Hope it does change, but it's really, really disappointing. The next game, the Pelicans beat the Bulls 115-111. Without Larry Nance... Jonas Vasu Inuasas. 21 and 13 in 30 minutes. Use this to sell high. Or maybe not, actually. Maybe wait to see what more of the information is on Nance. But this is not surprising. Nance goes out. He goes big. N- not a shock. Ingram, 22 and 9. Good game. Herb Jones, another good game. Now, Jones had three big offensive games in a row. 17, 4 and 3, and another three steals. Good for him. While Zion had 19 and 5. Pretty empty night there from Zion. CJ McCollum, why can't he shoot? What is, what's going on with this guy? 23% from the field. One of three from the line, seven, four, and five, one steal and two blocks. Now, I was down on him in draft season. I said, yeah, I think he's going maybe 10 spots too high. I think he'll be the one that sacrifices, but I couldn't have anticipated this level of bad shooting. Also, Trey Murphy, only 20 minutes. 18 minutes, 28 minutes, 20 minutes. Lance was out, two points. Bye-bye, Trey. I'll add you later on if I need to. I don't think he is worth holding. And you can, I get it. If you've got a bit more, more patience with that. But bench players who fluctuate in production and performance, like like the way he is, and I love the guy, but he's not locked into a role. If you're not locked into a role and you're a bench player and your in-game performance can fluctuate, then I don't think you're worth a must-hold status. And that's where I am with him. Bill Hernan Gomez got the backup center minutes with Nance out. For the Bulls, DeRozan, have, after two slow games, was great. 33, 3, and 3, and Levine had 23, 4, and 4. Good to see both of those guys Going big while Patty Williams, four blocks, yeesh, a steal, 26 minutes, and did that while Drummond was back. Drummond played only 12 minutes because Vooch played only 27. Very interesting how small they went. Very interesting. Desumu, I should have stuck to my guns. Maybe he's not this good. Seven, three, and four. Three shots, 10 usage. Hold him, I guess, but he's outside the top 180 over the last week. In 10 10 leagues, I wouldn't bother with Desumu. I think he's going to require someone being out for him to be a top 100 player. And you can hold him and you probably should hold him. But what's he doing? He's getting now played by Goran Dragic, who had 14, 2, and 6. Dragic is moving into at least 16 team, maybe 14 team league discussions. He's playing really well. While the Rabbit Hunter, Alex Caruso. Be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. He was scoreless in 23 minutes. You do not have to hold him in 12-team leagues. All right, we'll do the next game now. That's a good way to do it, isn't it? Do the next one. The Memphis Grizzlies just beat the Spurs 124-122. The big fella, Desmond Bain. It took 39 minutes to get there. It was an overtime um, it was an overtime game. So that makes, uh, yeah, obviously, a little bit more sense in terms of getting those minutes up. But 32 points, six rebounds, six assists. He's dominating. 
After I saw a little bit of the usage distribution in preseason, I did bump him up a little bit, but not to this level. He's top 30. Morant also killing it. Morant's actually 24th for the season. Bain's 28th. Hmm. Morant, 32, 5, and 5. Well, Stephen Adams pulled down 19 rebounds and played 37 minutes in his return from that one-game absence. Big minutes from him, a nice steal and a block. He's been pretty useful as a back-end sort of guy. We know he's got his limitations, of course, but that production's really good. Let's check in on South... Check in on Santi Aldama. Get that garbage out of here! Oh, 7-7 seven and seven in 23 minutes. You don't need to hold him. While Brooksy had 13 points, and you're going to be shocked at this as well, he was under 40%. Five rebounds, three assists. He's not a 12-team category league player. Nor is Tyus Jones, who had 11 points. While Brandon Clark, you can also jack him off. Get that garbage out of here! Six points in 15 minutes. We got good minutes from uh, Lil John Concha. What? Four points, though, in 28 minutes with five rebounds. He isn't going to cut it for the Spurs. Pirtle, 22-9 and nine with four assists and two steals. Oh, what? He's crushing it at the moment. Yes, Bad free throws, but the last couple of games have been really strong from Pirtle. While Goldfinger Charlie Bassey, with Zach Collins out for the next few weeks, Bassey's the backup center. He had 10 and 6 with two steals and a block. You add him in 16 team leagues, I think. And to be honest, in a on a per game basis, not to be honest, to be act, to be factual, he's a top 100 player on a per game basis, Charles Bassey. Huh. I would add him in 16, probably 14. Vassell, 22, 3, and 6. He continues to be really good. While it was a stinker from Calden Johnson. 16, 8, and 4 is good, counting stats-wise, but 27 from the field is bad. And then 60 from the line kills you. But we give him a pass. He's been really, really strong. Sohan played 30 minutes. That's really encouraging. He had 13 points with two steals. He's probably more of a luxury stash or a 14-team league guy. While Trey Jones shot poorly again. Before rebounds, 11 assists and a steal. He does remain a 12-team league guy. The one big game from Richardson last time out, that was a little bit of a mirage. 13 points with three threes. I don't think we need to worry about him in a 12-team format. Another overtime game. This one was a double overtime game between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm not sure how much to take away from this from the Bucks because they were without Giannis and Drew. But Javon Carter played 45 minutes, had 36, 4, and 12 with five threes. What a gigantic performance that is from Carter. That pushes him into the um, top 135 for the season. He's still only really a 14-team league guy, and this is a big outlier. Brooke Lopez played 46 minutes. What? 24 and 13 with five blocks. His ridiculous start to the season continues, while Grayson Allen made uh, made the most of the opportunity. 18 points, two threes, and so did Marjon Beauchamp. 19 and 8, five triples, two steals. But again, I think we're chucking most of this out. It's a double overtime game, and it's without their two best players and their third, who hasn't played a game yet, Chris Middleton. Portis had 13 and 9. Wes Matthews played five, or had five points in 29 minutes, and George Hill had 12, 2, and 5 with three steals. Holiday does look like he will miss on Friday. So that is good for streaming Carter and Allen. But this level of production, like Javon Carter took 27 shots. I don't think that's there's anything rooted in reality to expect him to be this good. But he's at least on the 14-team streaming value chart with those absences. Shea was ridiculous again. 46 minutes, 39, 4, and 4 with two blocks. While I think well, I think we have to add Alexei Pokishevsky. It'll be up and down, right? But 17 and 10, two steals, two blocks, four triples, two assists. We give him an honorary Richie. Two for two, two, two. Trey Mann also had a big game. 21 and 6 with five triples in 36 minutes. I'm not adding him. Josh Giddy. We talked about on the buy low, sell high yesterday, how his rebounds were ridiculously low. Why were they low? Well, he had 15 of them here. 18, 5, and 6. Now, he missed both his free throws. There's no defensive stats or threes. It's not a great game, but it's a step in the right direction. Well, Robinson Earl played only 13 minutes. This is what I mean with Poku, though. He played 39, but Robinson Earl played 13. Like, Robinson Earl could play 22 next game. The Bronco, Jalen Williams started this game out really well, but nothing much happened after that. Broncos country, let's ride. Nine and five with a triple one. We just he's just a waiver wire guy that we hold on to. And um yeah, Lou Dort had twelve and seven. The three assists are solid, the four steals are good, but I don't think we need to look at Dort as a twelve team league guy. He's a fourteen team league player. No, my son is also named Bort. So yeah, that's um that was it's a weird game. It's it's a weird game, weird performances, but the big takeaway I think there has got to be Alexei Pokashevsky. All right, we've got two games to go. The battle for Los Angeles. Not a surprise here that the Clippers get the win over the Lakers, 
101, the final score. I guess the news here is about LeBron because it wasn't great. Where's the sound? LeBron James. Um, he had to go to the locker room and didn't return with a leg issue. Looked like he's groin. They said leg soreness. He's banged up quite a bit this season. We'll have to watch that. 30 and 8, four triples, five assists, and two steals. One of his better actual fantasy games, but yeah, we're watching that. Anthony Davis, 21 and 9, and Westbrook again hit his free throws. 14, 4, and 9 with two steals. Much, much better off the bench. Troy Brown had another serviceable game. 14 team league game. 14 and 4, two triples, 32 minutes. But that's about it. Beverly played a lot of minutes, 35 of them. And Austin Reeves played 35 and had 8 and 9. But they're, they're not 12 team league guys. The rest of the rotation, especially with um, Lonnie Walker out, <clears throat> is pretty rough. We've got 14 max Christie minutes for some reason. For the Clippers, Paul George continues to play well. 29, 6, and 4 with two blocks, while Marcus Morris also continues to play well. 11 and 8, two steals, two blocks. While Kawhi's out, which might be a while, Morris is uh, really solid there. Another John Wall poor field goal night. At least he hit his free throws. 10, 4, and 6, two steals, a block. is good production across the board. You've got to be able to deal with his deficiencies, which are the shooting numbers, but the assists and steals are pretty solid here. Zubats, two blocks again. Got that done. 10 and 8, 36 minutes. Not ideal. While Reggie Jackson, of course, does not belong on a 12-team roster. While Luke Kennard had 13 points in the start, Norman Powell had 18 off the bench, and the Powell, Kennard, man, 21 minutes, continues to just cannibalize each of those guys, and none of them are real 12-team um, league players, pretty obviously. They're streamable guys, they're more 14-team league guys. The last game, the Cavaliers and the Sacramento Kings. The Kings win at 127-120. Don Mitchell, again, was on fire. He's done. He's good. 36, 5, and 4 with six triples. He remains a top 10 player somehow. He's been ridiculously good. While it was a struggle for Garland, and by struggle, I mean it was terrible. Six points on 11%. The eight assists are nice. The usage was down. That is just a rough night from Garland. I'm not super panicking, but Mitchell's taking a lot of his value, unfortunately. It was also a good night from Karis Levert, which we don't always get. 21, 10, and 6. He was efficient. He got the assists. He really took over with Garland struggling. I'm not... Addy, I'm not saying he's a must-roster player. I'm not panicking there, but this was a good game. Allen had 20 and 7. Good game from Jarrett. While Mobley, 16 and 6, but no blocks. Continues to be, look, okay. Okay. Not really taking big steps forward, but okay. Kevin Love. My problem with Kevin Love as a must-roster 12-team league guy is minutes upside. He played 21 here. 9 and 8 is okay. It's solid. It's good. It's not bad. But he's never going to play big minutes, and that's always going to have a limitation on what he's able to do for fantasy. For the Kings, Sabonis, not fouling out anymore. 21, 5, and 6, 3 steals, really good. The pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. 20 and 9, 75% shooting. But the thing we need to look at there is 15 usage. He hit 75%. I'm not overreacting to this. He's not a 12 team league guy. Only 29 minutes for De'Aaron Fox. They went with a little bit more Davion Mitchell for some reason. It wasn't a foul thing, wasn't an injury thing. Just a matchup thing, I guess. 15, 2, and 8. Fox with three steals. Well, better game from Keegan Murray. Still not good, and his rebounds still continue to be not great. But 14 and 3, four triples, two steals, and a block. This is why we wanted to buy low a little bit and to hold on and see what happened. Kevin Herter, yeah, it was always going to cool off, and it has now. 14 points, two assists, two, tri two threes, two steals. Like, it's good enough. We keep holding, but that top 50 run was garbage. It was never going to stick. And we're seeing that yeah, balance out. Well, Malik Monk, not. Awesome, but not bad. 14, 2, and 5 with three steals. Much like Herder, he, I think, remains a 12-team league player. We got 19 Trey Lyles minutes. He had 16 points with four threes, but I'm, I'm never going to get sucked into the Trey Lyles business. It's just not going to happen. Lines of the night. The monstrous line of the night does go to Mikhail Bridges in Phoenix. He was really, really good, especially early on. Your waiver wire is Javon Carter. Maybe streamed for 14 teams, especially with Drew out Friday, but that's about it. Young gun is Shengun, who's crushing it at the moment. And then the dud is Colin Sexton. Not a surprise. Your top 10 players. Number one was Mikhail Bridges, then Durant, Booker, Carter, Don Mitchell, Van Vliet, Markinen, Mitchell and Markinen traded for each other. Um, Aaron Gordon, Tyrese Halliburton, and Des Bain. Your top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Carter, Pokiszewski, 12-team ad. Grayson Allen, 14-team stream. Seth Curry, 14-team. Malik Beasley, stream only. Beauchamp, eh, I think that's just a, an injury situation there. Nothing exciting. Trey Mann, deeper leagues. Charlie Bassey, yeah, Goldfinger for 14 team is I do think it's interesting. Sam Hauser, 16 team maybe, and Drew Eubanks while Nurkic is out, that's about it. 
And your top 10 players in points leagues today, Durant, Bridges, Lopez, Booker, Javon, Van Vliet, Doncic, Gildas Alexander, Ojananobi, and LeBron James. And that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, you thumb it up. You leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.